the September. Yeah, September edition of Why So Serious. This is Rory Cashin. And I am Broken Hayes. And we're going to tell you our opinions about things. So, yeah. listen our up. Favourite three and least favourite three movies of the month of September of 2012. We're in the IFI, in the lovely new plush screen that they have here. It's plush. It is plush. It's Even very... the walls have that kind of mental asylum, can't hurt yourself feel. <laughs> Um, it's it's incredibly posh, and we're very grateful to the IFI for letting us film here. So good thank job, you. IFI. Thank you. Let's get this party started. True on the road. The third best film of September two thousand and twelve was Lawless. Charge that shit to Mastercard already. Oh visa. And written by Nick Cave, so uh, it's their second collaboration after the proposition, and it has Tom Hardy, Shia LaBeouf, who I hate. <sighs> Uh, Gary Oldman for about seven seconds. Yay. Guy Pearce playing a Machiavellian, mustache twirling, yeah. awful villain. He's great though. Yeah, he's great at Addy. But, but it's, it's terrible. Just, yeah. Yeah. Mia, what's her name? Was it Kowska? And go. And Jessica, Jessica Chastain. She's very pretty. She's gorgeous. Um, basically, in Prohibition era America, the Bondurant brothers or the Borodant brothers, I always get them the name confused. It's Tom Hardy, Shia LaBeouf, and the third guy. Yeah. Um, are illegally running hooch through the county of Virginia and uh, it is up to Guy Pearce to stop them. But you don't want him to stop them. No. Because they're complete anti-heroes and you're... They're them. like Robin Hoods giving yeah. alcohol to the poor. <laughs> yeah. That's, a bit, that's it, really. Yeah. That's, that's really Robin Hood. And all the ends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fantastic soundtrack done by Nick Cave. It's completely anachronistic, but it completely works for the film. Good word usage. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. We are expanding our IQs and vocabulary here. It's because we're in the iFi, we're getting smarter. Yeah. Nick Cave has written a fantastic script. Um, the violence is still violent, but it's not quite as harsh as the proposition, which kind of was a bit of relief for me. And uh, John Hillcoat, after um, all the work that he's done, all the films that he's done before, The Road, The Proposition, and all those kind of post-apocalyptic films creates the atmosphere perfectly. It's really great. My only complaint was that it was very sexist. It was. He, he John Hill, Hillco hates women, and I don't know why. Mm. Maybe it's because you're so annoying. I'm oh, sorry. Back to the kitchen and make me dinner. Sorry, do you want a sandwich? Yeah. Okay. Until, I, until dinner time. <laughs> I came back. Dinner was great. But only under duress. Yum, yum, yum. Out of ten? Uh, six and a half. Mm, I would say similarly. Similarly. Yeah, six and a half, seven, you know. Yeah, yeah. Right, so number two. Number two. Was. Was. Do you remember? I do remember. Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah, go on then. Dread. Right. Dread, controversially, I preferred to our number one. But I think, on the whole, yeah. um, <laughs> everyone else in the world seems to be prepared our number one to dread, so... And I didn't. Here we are. I didn't prefer it to our number one, so um, we're going on aggregate. We had a fight outside the I-5 in Eustace Street. Sorted it out, mm -hmm. and uh, I won. Quick trip to the hospital later, and dread is number two. Yep. Um, so, directed by Pete Travis, yep. who did Vantage Point, which is okay. Yeah. And then he did something else, which I forgot the name of, but I think it was bad. <laughs> Probably. Uh, and then written by Alex Garland, who is great. He did 28 Days Later and Sunshine and Never Let Me Go. And, and Life Less Ordinary and all those early Danny Boyle films. Really great, great writer. Uh, if you don't know what Dread's about, I don't, I don't know how to help you. Um, it's set like in a post-apocalyptic world again. Um... And I think there's less than a billion people left in the world and they all live in these mega cities and giant terror blocks that are like 200, 250 stories high. And Dredd goes into one of them to... Dredd is judge, jury, executioner. Um, he's part of the police force and he is allowed to make the choices as to what people are sentenced to and carry out the sentence on the spot. You need context! Did you see that? You need context. What's that? What is that? Ventriloquism. <laughs> I'm just a puppet on a string here. Mm -hmm. Speak. Yes, he goes into a building to find the baddie mama who's played by Lena Headey, who's that awful wench from Game of Thrones. Mm. And she shuts down the building and tells everyone in the building to kill Dredd, and then it's a big violent action fest. And it was surprisingly good, surprisingly violent. Mm. Uh, 
What's his face? Was dread. Carl Urban. Carl Urban. Gave great chin. Good chin acting. A lot, like a lot of this. Yeah. He's a better chin than me. He's a cleft. No, not a cleft. What's that called? Cleft. Is he? Mm. Bum chin. Bum chin. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was really good. Uh, well, maybe it's because my expectations were so low. Mm. And it came out quite good. I quite enjoyed it. I thought it was a very similar film to a film that was released earlier in the year. Which is unfortunate because... I was hoping I, she wasn't going to mention that. Yeah, Alex Garland started writing the film in 2006, so he probably did have the idea before Gareth Evans, but uh, sadly The Raid came out before Dread, so therefore it did kind of suffer from similarity syndrome. Mm -hmm. But um, Lena Headey was absolutely amazing. Donald Gleeson was incredible in it, absolutely incredible. Um, and there were some amazing action sequences like the bit with the gun where she shot over <laughs> or shot up like three apartments with this massive gun yeah <coughs> yeah quite impressive yeah surprisingly gory violence because you can have all these violent scenes that don't actually show any blood or any kind of mm. um people being injured from the violence but this, this one, is not one of those ones. no it's not so, it's 18s it's a hard 18s yeah right out of 10 uh seven i would give it seven yeah i'd agree with that you know yeah agreement and not just because she beats me up when the cameras are turned off. <sighs> so, the number one movie for September 2012 was... Looper! Which was the film that we had the argument about outside. Yeah. And absolutely killed each other in the middle of Temple Bar. Yep, she won. Yep. Took advantage of my illness. <coughs> Do you have the black hole? Uh, Looper is the story of Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who plays a character called Joe, who is a Looper, who basically um, kills people sent back from the future um, because the mob wants to get rid of them. But there's also, these Loopers run the risk of having their own loop closed and end up killing themselves. So when Joseph Gordon-Levitt's future self arrives in the form of Bruce Willis, he doesn't kill himself and he has to track him down and find him and sort of all out the time travel paradox stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Emily Blunt's in it as well. Cheers. I can't really say too much about her character without giving too much about the film away. Mm. Uh, Jeff Daniels is in it as well, but his characters felt a bit superfluous mm. to the story. Um, well, Dano is in there as well as a bit of a moral and a bit of a lesson for Joe, but mm. the lesson that Joe doesn't learn. He does not learn that lesson. No. no. Oh, also, spoiler, spoiler, Paul Dano gets, like, one of the worst death scenes. Oh, yeah. Like, really nasty-ass death scene. I was like, oh, God, it's yeah. quite it's vicious. Quite horrific. Um, yeah. Take that back down again. Um, so, yes. Directed yeah. by Rian Johnson, who did The Brothers Bloom and Brick. And Brick. Um, I didn't get the five-star tidal wave that um, every other critic seems to be giving Looper. I thought it was good, mm. but I didn't think it was as good. So maybe if you, if you come in with lowered expectations, that will help. Um, but, I didn't um, know what to expect going in to see it. I knew I liked the trailer and I really wanted to see it, but I didn't really know what to expect. And it does kind of go off in a different direction than you would expect, but... The thing I really liked about it was the time travel that they actually play with the paradoxes that can be formed by time travel rather than like Back to the Future and all these other time travel films that go, no, you can't meet yourself, you'll rip a hole in the time-space continuum. So I really liked that. I thought it was clever um, and the future world that it's set in is not too different from our own, although they do have hover motorbikes. And telekinesis. Yeah. So out of ten? I'd give it seven as well. Hmm. I'd give it like eight out of ten, so... To average that out, seven and a half out of ten. Which is more than dread. Yeah. So I guess we didn't need to fight. No. It just worked itself out. It did. Great. It did. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So yes, the worst three films of September 2012. Number three worst is one I haven't seen. Primarily because I wasn't here when it came out. Yeah. I found it was like two and a half hours long, nearly. Yeah. So I didn't go see it. But Brogan did. Sadly I did, it's Savages. 
It feels a little bit like a music video, a little bit like a video game, and a little bit like let's have the most hedonistic and ridiculous plot in history. Sounds amazing. Taylor Kitsch and Aaron Taylor Johnson decide to strike up a relationship with Blake Lively. The two of them, she has two boyfriends, lucky her, because they both fulfil different needs in her. Um, but they're also pot dealers and uh, Salma Hayek gets annoyed about this and decides to try and take over their turf by kidnapping Blake Lively. There's good ideas and stuff in there but it focuses too much on the hedonism and not enough on the actual story and uh, it could at least have cut an hour out of it and been a much better film. How's Benicio del Toro? He kind of plays a character similar to the one in The Usual Suspects in that you can't understand the word he says. Mm -hmm. And John Travolta's in there for a minute. I don't know why. How's Sam Hyde? Yeah, she looks good. She looks really good. And she has that kind of thousand yard stare where she cut a man down. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Like Sam Hyde. So out of ten, I would give it three. Oh. The second worst film of September 2012 was The Sweeney. <laughs> Uh, Ray Winstone and British rapper Plan B are in the... Is that who he is? Yeah. Ugh. Um, are in the London Metropolitan something, 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 strike force or whatever. Special it's police. force of the police thing. Yeah. yeah. They were called the Sweeney for a reason I've never fully understood. And they are put in charge of investigation of a woman who is executed at a jewellery heist but for no reason, uh, and then to try to find a bad guy, and that's the whole film. So it ripped off Christopher Nolan, because I had his score from Inception, it did. more or less. <laughs> it totally did. And I had a big bit in the middle where the where the hero is in prison for ages, like The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. And then I ripped off my command because I had a big shootout in the middle of the city. In Trafalgar and Square. Just had no empathy or sympathy for any of the characters. Didn't care in the end whether they lived or died. Um, the only one I had a little bit of empathy for was Damien Lewis, who is in Homeland, but only because he is Damien Lewis from Homeland. He was completely wasted in the film. And Plan B is probably the worst actor I've ever seen in Oh my life. god, terrible. So, out of ten? Two. Two. Yes, the worst film of September 2012 was Resident Evil Retribution. Just now. Just now. Uh, the plot: Mila Jovovich wakes up in a submarine, sorry, an abandoned submarine uh, base under an ice cap in northern Russia. Fake versions of New York, Tokyo, Moscow, and a suburb in Washington. Fill these oh, yeah, up that's with what clones of real people, there. and then if it's in New York, and then they sell it to Russia, and then they do vice versa from Moscow. And that seems overly complicated. It, it is complicated. overly, overly complicated. Terrible. Like, truly awful. A ten. One. Still better than the Three Stooges. So that's the worst of... So the Yeah. Um, do we have anything to talk about this month? We're going to do horror though, don't we? Oh, yeah. So you have to leave. Yeah, I do. So, Broga's going to take her leave. And, um, I'm going! God damn it! <laughs> Brian Lloyd on his inaugural. You know, yeah. You Put fucking my glasses on. Hip Just a <laughs> hipster! You know, we are going to discuss uh, the horathon in the IFI. Yeah. If you want the full information on it, it's www.ifi.ie forward slash horathon horathon um it's really good there is really like a huge lineup you'll see it on the link which is right here well it'll be gone by now but um the film that i'm gonna go see is deep red um they had suspiria which is like my one of my favorite horror films i, I love that you ever seen it i have it's fucking amazing but uh yeah they had that a couple of years ago but this year they're playing deep red it's brilliant um the other film that's on is zombie flesh eaters which is pretty cool if you're into that kind of zombie films, are you into zombie films, Rory? Yeah. Yeah, you kind of dig it. I mean, you were kind of ragging on Resident Evil, though. Sorry, I rephrase. I'm into good zombie films. I'm going to see Antiviral, which is directed by the son of David Cronenberg. Uh, it's about a medical facility, I guess, who sell diseases that celebrities get to their most avid fans. And then one of them 
one of the celebrities dies just after one of their fans gets the disease and then he's the fan that were killed her before it kills him. Looks very good. Um, Sleep Tight, which is from the director of Wreck and Wreck 2. And it's about a scary uh, apartment building concierge. VHS, which is a collection of short horror films from very famous uh, genre directors. Fantastic reviews in Fright Fest and Sundance and South by Southwest. Um, Silent Hill Revelations, because I'm the only person who probably liked the first Silent Hill film, but I think it was the best movie adaptation of a video game, and the second one looks quite good. And then the surprise film, which hopefully will be better than last year's one, Coco wasn't a justified. It was no, it was um, George uh, Justice. No, stop shouting at me. Sorry, it was a Nicholas Cage. Film. Shut up, I'm <laughs> take. Sorry, <laughs> Trespass with Nicole Kidman and Cam Gagne. It was truly what it was. It not just it was Justice last I year. Slap it. Sorry, I just your I, hair off your head. Sorry, I, I was there. Were you there? No, I wasn't, but I thought. So that's what I'm going to see in the Horathon. That's what Brian recommends in the Horathon. But there are, in fact, over 30 films showing over five days. So I'm sure there's something there for everyone. Young Frankenstein is playing. So there's a comedy in case you don't like cars. Um, so yeah. So yeah. IFI.com forward slash Horathon. Can't get anything there. IFI, sorry. IFI.ie. Well, it'll be, it'll so be, he won't be, it'll be written here. Be back, anyway. <laughs> it's my first one, all right? I'm nervous. It happens. I get performance on things, don't <laughs> This has been Brian. That's been Rory. And I've been Brogan. <laughs> and this has been Why So Serious. September 2012, yay! 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 And then we do this right here, yay! <laughs> I'm not doing that. Yay!